babies, let's let's not crack. Can you can you hold on? Can you hold on one more day? Can you hold on one more week? Can, can you hold on? Uh, oh, hold on. For some reason, for some reason, my mind when I'm thinking about not cracking, I feel like a like a bowling pin in the bowling ball's coming right now. I'm not gonna crack. I'm not gonna crack. I'm not gonna crack. You know. And you fall over. I, I meant probably because I look like a, a bowling pin, but you fall over. I look like a ball. Yeah, I need to veto. And you fall over, and then it recollects, it recollects the bowling pin and puts you back in the front. And the ball comes, and you fall again. And then the machine goes, and it puts you back. But today, no matter what happens, let's make a pact. Let's make an oath with one another. Let's look at the person to the left and the person to the right and let's decide right now that no matter what happens, I ain't gonna cut you. Uh-uh, call it. Call it out. Call it out. Call it out. I don't care if the doctor give me bad news. Call it out. I don't care if I'm waiting on the blood test. Call it out. I don't care if there ain't no food in the cupboard. Call it out. I don't care if there's a bitch you notice on my door, call it out. I don't care if I got a car but no insurance, call it out. I don't care if you got two bad kids and one good kid, call it out. Because today is not the day that I'm going to crack you, say amen. Earth in vessels. Heart breast on every side. Yet not crushed. Perplexed, not despaired. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. The life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. Can we, can we say that today, today, let's move out of the suffering of the crucifixion. And let's move into the power of the resurrection. Because the power in you is of God. Uh, how many remember uh, Sister Lucy? She came to our church. Remember she had the oil from her hands and, and, and she put oil there on, on everybody and, one time I was going to say my sweat was oil one time and God rebuked me and so I'm not going to do it. She had sweat to come through her home and she brought her granddaughter. She said, my, my granddaughter's dying of cancer. And she said, will you, will you pray for my... This, this is a woman with a healing ministry. You don't let the oil, you don't let the oil come out unless the oil, oil break the yoke of the enemy. Amen. But she said, you know, we, we can't seem to, to, we can't seem to get her healed. So she came to, to the, she was selling bracelets or something for her, 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 I don't know, for money for her medical bills or whatever. So I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to buy a bracelet from you. I said, but I wear a lot of bracelets. And nobody better make fun of me, man. I bench 415. You want to mess with business with bracelets, all right? I said, I'm going to trade you. I said, give me, my bracelets mean a lot to me. I, I, you know, at certain times, God has me give them away. And, and, and I said, I took her bracelet and I put it on. I said, now you wear my bracelet and then you put it on. And you, when you think of me, when you see your bracelet, you think of, of me and you pray for me. I said, because you know, you, you, I know you a prayer warrior. I said, but when I have your bracelet on, then I think I'll pray for you. Well, I, this morning I found out that she passed away. Was she 14, 15? She's too young anyway. No? Yeah? Oh. I've been known to be wrong. I'm going to go like, she's alive! And the door's oh man, I thought you were dead. I heard she passed away. And, and I was talking to Pastor Mr. I said, Pastor Mr. I said, that's how I talk to a home age person. Like, Pastor Mr. Come over here, Pastor Mr. What are you doing? Pastor Mr. How are you with my shoes, Pastor Mr. That's how I talk at home. Don't get me wrong. 
I call her on the phone, be like, it's Pastor Misty there. She goes, you know it's me. <laughs> no, I just want to say it. But I never can get her to say, Pastor Victor, no, are you home? <laughs> so I said, Pastor Misty, I said, why do you think, why do you think God didn't heal her? She says, how, how do you know he didn't? It just, her work here on earth was done. So smart, man. That's a gonna that's a fortune cookie, man. You know, that's a bumper sticker. Listen to me. The point is that the devil may lie to you and try to crack on you and try to break you open and try to make you think that your prayers don't matter and you ain't healed and you ain't gonna overcome and you ain't gonna crack the sea wide open and tell mountains to move. How do you know that you ain't healed? How do you know that your children right now ain't talking to somebody about the most high God? How do you know that your blood vessels ain't turning around and lining up according to the word of God just because you can't see it? How do you know your relationship ain't being fixed right now but you can't see it? That two years from now, your partner's going to say, you know what, there was a day in 2012 when I knew my heart had to be changed, when I knew I had to do something different. But they won't speak about it for a long time. I was arguing with Pastor Missy. You know what, am I saying your name right? I know I'm not saying it. I was arguing with Pastor Missy. And I had to humble, and I had to say it was my fault. So I squeezed her by her neck. I mean, I grabbed her so gently by the, <laughs> by the cheeks. And I said, I said, Pastor Misty, I said, I'm sorry. This was my fault. I should have humbled a long time ago. And, and, and then I gave her a, a soft kiss, because I got big old lips like a, a half black. And I gave her a soft, soft kiss. And then I looked at her and said, Pastor Missy, I will never admit to anybody that I was wrong. <laughs> and I walked away. <laughs> I said, so even if you, even if you say, there was a day when my husband humbled down to me and he said he was wrong and he said that he had to apologize. And then you come and ask me, be like, oh, that was it. <laughs> but when God intervenes, when God intervenes, you know what I think, Sarah? I think if that devil keeps knocking on my little vessel, it's going to crack open and he's going to get a mess of power come right out of my chest. A mess of power just come right out. There's going to be houses and cars and jobs and, and there's going to be love and anointing and, and, and revival just come right out of me. Because the devil don't know who he's messing with. So he needs to stop. But don't crack, baby. Because there's something, there's something great in you. Do you know that there's something in you that I'll never have? I'll never have it. I'll never obtain it. I'll never, I'll never have it. It's so special and unique. It's just yours. It ain't mine. It's just for, it's for this time and for this moment. It's just, it's just yours. God, God said you're so special. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this power and I'm gonna go put it into a vessel of honor. Today I deem you vessels of Have you been dishonored? Have you been disrespected? Have you been talked about? Have you been backseated? Have you been overlooked? Have you been overpassed? Today I honor you. I put you in the front row, make you the head and not the tail, the beginning and not the end, because you are a child of God that carries the power of the creator of heaven and earth. And I deem you honorable amongst men and women. Now I'm going to make an altar call. Did I talk that long? I'm going to make an altar call.